All right, it's day two in London. Last night was amazing. Spurs beat Fulham, but it was still an amazing experience. Uh, my first Premier League game. Today's day two, and we are off to the British Museum. I was gonna jump on the uh, underground, which is like right across the street from my hotel, but it was a 17 minute ride by underground, followed by a nine minute walk. Well, it was 17 minutes total with an eight minute ride on the underground and a nine minute walk. It's only a 20 minute walk just to walk to the museum. It's only a mile away. So I'm gonna do the walk, get a little exercise today. Well, I'm almost there. Got a little sidetracked. I uh, was stopped and interviewed for a thing on cancer prevention. Uh, they asked me a few questions and we had a nice chat. It was fun. So I'm almost there. It's, uh, I don't know, another five minutes or so and we'll be at the British Museum. After being on my feet for a few hours at the museum, there's a Starbucks right across the street from the British Museum, so I'm stopping for a little snack and a drink and then going to make the journey over to do the touristy thing and get my picture in front of Buckingham Palace. So I don't know exactly which ones these are, but I do know that there are embassies along Buckingham Gate Road here, so I'm guessing these are a few of them that we're looking at. This one's got a sign, so maybe we'll get some history of this place. And there it is! Of course, this isn't the view you normally get of Buckingham Palace, so we're going to cross the street so we can get the good view. All right, so we're here. It's important to note that not only is the king not here now, as we can see, from the fact that the Union flag flying and not the Royal Standard, but he actually, King Charles has decided not to live here uh, during the working week as his mother did until the last years of her life. He and his wife, uh, the Queen Consort, continue to live at, um, at oh, what's the name of the house? Clarence House, and we're gonna go see that next.
So where he is is really not very far. Here's Buckingham Palace right here. And then if we swing around, I believe the first building there is Lancaster House. And then the one next to it would be Clarence House, where the king and queen consort live. But we're going to go try to get a little closer look if we can. So we're looking down the Royal Mall now. And uh, right down here on the left would be Clarence House. It's really pretty close. And I'm looking, it looks like that might be the Royal Standard, but we'll see for sure when we get closer. I think the King might be home. Now, it's the Union flag. That means he is not home. Not sure where he is. I was really hoping maybe I'd get lucky. Maybe he's out, maybe he's on his way back. Might do a little research and find out because if he's on his way back in the next hour or two, I might stick around for a glimpse. Well, I'm leaving, uh, there's Buckingham Palace there. This is a view of it you don't get very often through the park. Uh, and then right here's the complex that includes uh, Clarence House where the king lives. But I can just barely get a little glimpse of St. James's Palace. Right through over there, you see the little cupola. And it's St. James's Palace. That is the palace where people like King George III received John Adams when he became the first U.S. ambassador to the court of St. James. And they still, to this day, call it that. I realized as I was thinking about it that somebody's going to call me out on this, so I better correct myself. At the time of John Adams, he would have been known as something fancy like Minister Plenipotentiary to the court of St. James. But when I said it's still called that, what I meant was it's still called Ambassador at St. James, the St. James part being the part that I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, that's what it's considered to be is uh, the court at St. James is considered kind of the, uh, the place that you are sent to, to represent your nation. I love the British. Even when they warn you, they do it politely. I realize I haven't really shown the area around my hotel or where I'm staying, so we can go ahead and do that. Uh, right here at the King's Cross and St. Pancras Station, uh, which is when I when I look for booking a hotel, I try to find a place that's going to be really accessible for what I need. And since I'm not renting a car and I'm using public transportation, but and that includes long distance overland trains for Birmingham and then later the uh, train over to mainland Europe. Uh, this is the perfect location because uh, the underground station, King's Cross, is right, you know, easy to get on. It's literally the station is right across the street from my hotel. Uh, St. Pancras is where I'm going to be leaving when I head over to Bastogne on Friday. And Houston Station, which is actually quite close as well, just a couple of blocks away from my hotel, is where I'll be heading to Birmingham tomorrow on a train that'll take a little over an hour. So it's a great location. I'll show you a little bit of it here. So this is the whole kind of complex of the station here. Uh, King's Cross and St. Pancras. And then just across the street up here, a block down, there's where my hotel is. And actually there's an entrance for the King, King's Cross Underground that I'll show you that is right, right by my hotel. I should also mention, it's a very American part of town. There's a Burger King right there. There's a McDonald's right there. And there's a KFC. You can't see it from here, but it's really, really close to. It's just around the corner. And then right here, that street is where my hotel is. I just have to get across to it, which I guess I gotta go this way to do that. 
All right, so there's the entrance to King's Cross St. Pancras, and right over here where the scaffolding is, that's my hotel. Couldn't be more easily accessible to the whole city and beyond.